Hello everyone and welcome to a video tutorial brought to you by Wiltshire. Today I'll be revisiting one of my video tutorials that I did in the past. The one that I'll be revisiting is the PSD controller on PC. Now today I'll be demonstrating how to make it work better than the one I did before on Windows 7, 32-bit or 64-bit. You can also use XP or Windows Vista, it doesn't really matter. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to your UAC controls and turn them off. Personally, I hate UAC, so mine's off to begin with. So what you want to do is you want to drag this little slider here all the way to the bottom. Click OK. It may come up with a UAC. Just click OK. Don't worry about it. It's OK. So the next thing you want to do is you want to install your 32-bit or 64-bit driver. Now, if you're not quite sure what your computer is, go to your Start menu, go to Computer, and then go to System Properties. Now this will show your system type, and that's what you want to be looking at. You want to see your system type. See, mine's 64-bit. So if yours is 32 or 64, make sure you go by which it says on the computer screen. Now, since mine is 64-bit, I'm going to install the AMD64 driver. So I'm going to double-click that, and we're going to run it. So you can just click Next throughout the whole thing. It doesn't really matter just click next let it to install let it do whatever it wants and yeah so once it's installed we can click finish and once it's installed the next thing we want to do is we want to go to the device manager so I'm going to go to the start menu and type in a device manager alright now once you're in the device manager you want to go and have a look at your human interface devices so once you have found that click the arrow to expand the column now you can see that it shows up that my game controller is there. Now the next thing we want to do is want to right click and go to properties on the game controller. Now as you can see it says it's working properly, although it is not right now. What we want to do is we want to go to details, excuse me, and then once you see this little window pop up, we want to go to the property drop down menus. You can see it says device description. We want to change that to hardware IDs. Now as you can see the first one at the end it says revision 100. Now you have to keep that in mind, write it down, type it out in notepad on your computer just to keep that in mind. We have to remember this number because this is our actual game controller. Now once you have revision 100 or whatever revision your PS3 controller is, click OK and now we want to have a look at our human interface devices and we want to look at the USB input devices. You may have more than one, I have one so this makes it easier on me but it could be difficult for you. So what you want to do is you want to do the same process through all your USB input devices till you find the revision 100. So I'm going to right click on properties, go to details, and go to the hardware ID again. Now as you can see it has revision 100. So I'm going to select this one and once you've found your revision 100 click OK and right click and say uh, update driver software. Now once this window has appeared you want to go to browse my com computer for driver software. Now it'll ask us to pick a location, but we're going to click let me pick from a list of device drivers on my computer. Now what we want to do is we want to go to have disk. Now it'll come up with another window asking us to browse for it. So we're going to browse, and the next thing you want to do is, I'm actually already in the location that we need to go, but the next thing you want to do is you want to go to computer, program files, motion enjoy, DS3 folder, and drivers. Now, the next thing you want to select is the MIJX input. And click OK. And click Next. Now, it will install your computer or your PS3 controller on your computer. As you can see, it, I've encountered a problem trying to install this driver. That's OK. So we can click Next. And my controller should pop up now. As you can see, it's popped up. It's, it recognizes it's the Motion Enjoy Virtual Controller. Now the next thing we want to do, and it may ask you to restart your computer, don't restart your computer yet. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to run the driver signature overrider. So I'm going to right click and say run as, administ excuse me, run as administrator. And it will pop up asking us to agree to something. Just click next. Just ignore it. Just click yes. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our um, computer. We want to go back into the C drive, program files, where your motion and joy folder is, DS3, and drivers. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to go into 64-bit or 32-bit, doesn't really matter which one you install, but we want to select the MIJXFILT.SYS 
file. Now we want to copy that. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our local C drive again, go into the Windows folder, go into the System32 folder, and what we want to do next is we want to go into the driver folder. And what we want to do after we've gone into the driver folder is we want to copy and paste the file that we copied. And it will ask us to replace it, so I'm just going to replace it because I've already done it. And the next thing that you want to do is you want to go to sign a system file on the driver signature enforcement override. And click next. Now it's going to ask us to specify location, so what we want to do is we're going to go back into the place that we copied our folder, or file, excuse me, into the folder. We want to go back to the drivers. We want to go to the system32 and go to the drivers. And we want to find the file that we kind of copied into the folder from the program folders. So you want to find that, that file and make sure it's the right or correct one. Uh, here it is. So what we want to do is we want to right click and rename the file. So what we want to do is we want to select all the text and copy it. We're not going to rename it. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to go to the top bar here, click on it, and copy it. Now go back into the device overrider and click, or paste I guess, the, the destination and we're going to Forward, uh, forward bracket and then we're going to type the name of the file that we copied into the system32. So it was M I J X F I L T dot S Y S and we're going to click OK and it will pause for a bit and then it will it will uh, I guess put a digital signature on our, uh, our driver as you can see it will uh, pop up with a CMD and then it will say that our driver has now been signed and if you want to test it go into test mode so what we're going to do is we're going to go to enable test mode and we're going to click next and now that test mode is enabled you can now restart your computer so once you've restarted your computer we can continue the process so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to restart the computer and I'll come back to you guys after you've restarted your computer alright now that you've restarted your computer and now that I've restarted my computer we're going to install the vibration function on the controller so what you want to do is you want to go find the vibration driver installer just enter it and click next and make sure you specify the folder that you've installed it on motion enjoy since I'm on 30 or 64 bit I'm going to erase the x86. If you're on 32-bit, don't erase it. And click Next. Click in Yes, Install. Click Install. And you're good to go. So the next thing that we want to do is you're pretty much good to go, but I'm going to show you guys how to make your analog sticks work on the PS3 controller before I say goodbye. So we're going to go into the DS3 tool that you guys install. It may take a little bit to pop up. This software is a little buggy, but it works, so don't worry about that. And uh, okay, now that it's popped up and loading, we're going to go to the game control panel. Sorry, we're going to go to custom. And you can change the buttons here if you would like but I'm not going to change anything that's just for a little bit of knowledge for you guys in case you would like to change anything so next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to quick start and we're going to choose the analog gamepad 3 now this is with all the um, the the joysticks the vibration everything now for some reason if you click this it will not work the R2 or L2 I don't remember what it is doesn't work so if you click the Xbox 360 controller emulator this will make it work and all you need to do is click enable and it will and there we go our controller is now ready and now I'm going to test it and I'm going to go back to device manager or devices and printers excuse me and I'm going to test the game controller
So I'm going to go to controller settings, I'm going to go to properties, and I'm going to try out the controller. As you can see, my analog sticks work, and so does my arrows on my PlayStation 3 controller, and all the buttons work as well. So that's it guys, I hope you guys, I hope this helped you guys in any way, I hope this is a lot better than the other method before, and I'll be catching you guys later in the next video tutorial, just to let you guys know that I will be away on vacation at my cottage till Monday, so I will let you guys know when I am back, and I will be making a new video till then. Alright guys, see you later.